got to have patience if you are a true astronomer. So it's pretty high up above us right now. There's only one hot pixel to the right. Oh, no, we haven't seen nothing yet. Here, watch. I'm going to show you what real... Oh, by the way, this is only two-second exposure. Uh, yes, this is three... This is a two-second exposure. I'm going to bump that up to four seconds. How's that? Ah, watch this. Watch the power of an exterminator compared to any other USB cameras on the market. Uh, the AGC is set at off. Wow, look at that. I'm not done yet. Wow. Okay. Folks, this is only th four second exposure. Well, Larry, I'm going to have to do this. I should have uh, do a two-star alignment, and I didn't. I used the scope for the uh, Eclipse, and it was working perfect for that. But tonight it's not. But anyways, let's uh, pay attention a little bit here. We're going to put the APC. Now you're going to see where the APC comes in and, and shines through. We're going to put the APC at 4. And we're going to put the APC at 5. Wow. Look at the detail in M57 Live. And folks, this is only four second exposure. Wow, you can see the wispy detail. You can see all four stars. One, two, and three. We could possibly go a little bit higher. Let me change the gamma. The gamma is set at 045. And now the gamma is set at one. Wow. I like that. Oh, that's eye candy for me. I could sit here all night and view this. Yes. The idea is to balance everything out on an exterminator, an extreme, or an MCHP or VSS. That's the power of those cameras. That not one camera on the market, USB or otherwise, and I don't care who made it, nothing is going to beat the power of those cameras. 4, 2nd, and 57. Uh, what I've done earlier is I'm on manual mode for the white balance. And now I'm on ATW, so there's not much of a difference. Uh, hang on a sec. I showed what I did earlier. Unfortunately, I cannot show it now because... I was using KVY to rebroadcast it. Now I'm not. What I want to show here tonight is this. You can tell by my tracking every four seconds or so that it's it's moving. My tracking is no good. This is an Altaz. And here's here's the, here's the thing. I'm going to uh, explain that, uh, uh, Teresa, in a minute. Earlier on, I showed what I've done to uh, correct the, the images on the Exterminator 2. What you need to do is... The hue always default at 63 or 62, I believe. I brought the hue down at 41. What that does, it mixes the colors slightly different, okay? The saturation right now is at 35. It's way too high. I should have the saturation down to about maybe 23, 22, give or take. Here it is. But we're losing a little bit of color, and we're losing the green that we had in the middle of, the, of M57. Now, the stars looks funny because my tracking is also funny. So how can you expect to have a perfect tracking scoping in Altaz, especially where it's pointing at? See, I had M57 in dead center, and I was going towards the right, towards 3 o'clock. If you pay attention, every stars, especially the one at about 3 o'clock, 3.30, changes shape every time I have a refresh. And that is simple. This is an interline sensor. What happened is you got odd and even, but it's in, in the design of the exterminator, the odd and even is done one after another, not per group of, of, of 60 field, like the DSM or the DSC for that matter. So watch the star chain, see the, char the star chain shape, and that's the cause of that is tracking. We're tracking stars where it breaks down due to the 
uh, interline, either odd or even feeble, but eventually it's going to get uh, correct. Now, if you want to reduce that effect, it's easy to do. You bring down the sharpness a little bit, just like I just done. Now, my tracking is not good enough to show you a proper example. And you got to make sure that APC is set to zero. If you put the APC set to zero on horizontal gain and vertical gain at one, you are going to get much rounder stars, as you can see. But we also lose detail in M57. I like to see the crispiness in M57. So this is where I use the APC. I don't care for the stars at this point. They're easy to fix. If you take a picture of this, very easy to fix. Those who complain about square stars on this is simply they don't know how to adjust a damn camera. And number two, they don't have good tracking like I have. My tracking is the crap tonight. Very bad, in fact. So let's move M57 towards the middle again. You'll see this. Uh, it refreshes every four seconds or so. And that proves this is at four-second exposure. So keep... And the reason I keep exposure short is simple. The shorter the exposure, the less tracking error it's going to show. Therefore, you have to adjust the camera to bring that single in. You need to really tweak the, the camera using the software. I'm using Stefan software, and it's pretty well what I'm using now. The stars are fairly round. It could be better if my tracking would be better, but we can. Watch this. If I put the sharpness down at APC000, most of the stars are perfectly round. But my tracking is so bad that stars are going to change shape at every refresh and that basically shows you and proves to you that the interline the odd and even feel are not quite dead on because of the tracking if my tracking would be guided and eq mounted i would get a much better much much better image we're going to bring the apc back to five this time i'm going to bring that up to five Okay, see how crisp M57 has become. And also, you notice that there's, um, you could actually see a little bit of waves in there. What I mean is, in the ring itself, you see detail in the ring. Now, I'm going to bring up the saturation a little bit from 21 to about 27. That's going to bring us a little bit stronger color. So we could have that like that if we wish. Uh, of course, we're still at four seconds. Shall we try six seconds? Okay, we're going to bump that up to six seconds. Let's see what it's, what's going to happen. All right, so this is four second image at the moment. And let's go to six. There you go, that's six. Well, we see the greenish inside of M57, which we should see. But also, the, the ring itself is getting overexposed. Mistake number one everybody does, they go for too much exposure using a very sensitive sensor, or CCD or CMOS. In this case, this is a CCD. This is the ICX828 that I'm using in there. I have seen your broadcast length last night a little bit, and uh, very quickly, and I must admit, you were having a picnic with galaxies. This covers the conversation you and I had about galaxies, so don't tempt me tonight there. I'm really tempted to go for galaxies as well. <laughs> but I wanted to show the Ring Nebula. I remember David Paul with his 30 inch showed us a fantastic image of M57. I wanted to show tonight what an exterminator, an extreme, or VSS or MCHP could do if it's well tuned, if you got it well adjusted. Now my tracking's not good enough, and uh, we're still admiring M57 as it is. Central star pops right out. The second one next to it, I don't know what magnitude that is, pops right out. And we've got two stars towards the right in the ring itself. And I believe there's a 
fifth one at lower at about five o'clock in the ring. So we're seeing quite a lot here. Now I got Gamma at number one for the moment. We're gonna go Gamma 045. As you notice, we got a little bit more noise. A little bit more noise, but look at one o'clock. What do we see? IC 1296. We're looking at IC 1296. It's just a little fuzzy guy at one o'clock from M57. Just by changing the uh, gamma from 1.0 to 0.45. And here's the best part, folks. We are still at six second exposure. And look at the galaxy that we're getting in there. Truly. Actually, if you know where the hot pixel is, that blue one, uh, IC1296 is right at 11 o'clock from that hot pixel. It's fuzzy. Fuzzy little guy. And if, it keep, if my tracking keeps going haywire the way it is now, you are going to have a crash between the hot pixel and 1296 galaxy. Now, what you could do if you go with 045, you could bring down the brightness a little bit. We still see the galaxies, but if you notice, the ring around the stars diminished as well because the background is being put similar to what the black circles are. Black circles are there for one reason, because I'm using extreme amount of APC set at five. It's quite high. Well, we could go higher, which I'm going to show you. Let's put APC about halfway at 8. And the reason is, wait till you see the detail. We're going to see an M57. Look at that. Look at the detail inside of that ring itself. They're all over the place. I could back down on the sharpness of uh, the capture device. But I'm going to bring it up to about 7 or even 8. I can bring it up a little bit higher if I want to. Look at that. We're getting a little bit too much. We're, we're, it's, it's simply too much. The sharpness at number five on the capture device and the APC set at eight and nine gives us a really, really, really nice uh, amount of detail that we need to see in M57. And folks, we're still at six second exposure. So now we've got uh, this galaxy. Uh, I'm going to move back M57. As you can tell, my tracking is crap tonight. I did not do a two-star alignment at all when I started. I basically put the scope to sleep the other night. And we are going to raise up. There we go. All right. Okay, just wait till the tracking settled a little bit. I'm going to tuck away the uh, M57 towards the left. Here we go. Okay, there you go. This is six second exposure. Just wait a moment and we're going to view um, M57 in its glory. Wow, look at the amount of detail in there and all the stars inside of M57 is visible. One, two, three, and four stars. So that's the difference here from a real video camera and a USB camera. Instead of using super long exposures and stacking and whatever else you need, you don't need to do that. This is a six second exposure. We're looking at 12 IC1296 uh, in the upper corner, and we're also looking at M57 with incredible amount of detail in there. Now, we could probably lower that a bit more and increase the contrast. If we increase the contrast, that means we don't have to go longer exposure. Look at that upper galaxy now. It's taking shape, actually. Bring up the contrast to about 57 and bring down that brightness a little bit. 
You don't want to go too low. If you go too low, it, what it's called a single to noise ratio. You're going to have too much noise. Bring up the brightness a little bit to balance things out. There you go. It just doesn't get any better than this live. Why am I working? Thank you, Teresa. Just wondering. All right. Sounds good. So anybody can get detail like this if you've got good tracking on your scope and if you learn to adjust the camera properly. Now, looking at the colors that we have in there, it's, it's quite acceptable for what, what we're observing. What I'm after is the detail inside the ring, the ring itself. And of course, we do see the, the greenish uh, in the middle. And we also will capture easily uh, all the four stars, possibly a fifth one within uh, the ring. But we also see the galaxy, the uh, IC1296 upper corner, about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock position from uh, M57. And uh, it's being picked up at 6 second exposure. Now, we could go a little bit longer in exposure, so let's bump that up to, we're going to go up to 8 seconds. Let's see what it's, what's going to happen in 8 seconds. What's going to happen is my tracking is not good, so stars won't be as nice, and also the, we're going to lose detail inside of the ring. And the reason is because of tracking. So you're smearing, you're actually smearing the image slightly, and you're losing the detail because of that because of exposure is much longer and we lost detail in there and we're starting to overexpose if we overexpose all we got to do is switch gamma from 045 to gamma 1 and increase the brightness on the capture device to compensate you're going to get nice background but we're still overexposed so what's the point to go that high I'd say about six seconds five seconds even four seconds was the best. Between four and six seconds. Here, this is four seconds. So let's go back to six seconds because I think the six second exposure gave us exactly what we wanted. So I went back to gamma 045. That plays a major role on image quality. Look at that. You get instant gratification that way. Stars are not bad at all. If I would have a better tracking, the stars would be normally shaped. And if you look at the brighter stars, every refresh, every six seconds, they change shape. And that's this caused by the interlace, simply because my tracking is not good enough. So keeping the exposure short as possible will allow you to have better stars. If you go longer exposure, you won't have better stars. If you got square stars, like some, a handful have been saying it on other lists, it's because they don't know how to adjust the camera. They don't know how to do a, how to have a proper tracking on their scope, and they blame the camera right away. Now my tracking is not good here tonight, as you could tell, but we still got M57 pretty nice in there tonight. Very interesting to observe. A lot of detail in there. And as you can tell, my tracking is not good. It's a good thing in a way because it shows you that even with poor tracking, you get to view something that's really nice. I could look at an image for hours on end and study the structure. Here's the other part that I like. Let me move uh, the object back in the center. get a new refresh every uh, six seconds or so yes rusty uh man oh man i wish i had the uh a kvy cam on right now because i would show you the setting 
When you start the exterminator, the extreme, the VSS, or the NCHP, you've got a feature in there called APC. APC stands for Advanced Pixel Control. Make sure that that adjustment is at zero on a horizontal and one on a vertical. I'll show you. Mine's at six and seven now because I simply want to show what APC does to the object. You bring a lot more detail and the central star's pinpoint and so is the star inside the object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go zero and one. There you go. Look at the rest of the star in the image. Most of them went fairly round, and you could improve that furthermore by lowering the sharpness on your capture device. You can actually do that, but we're losing detail also inside of the object. So if you put sharp, the sharpness on the MCV1, your stars are going to be more round because you're not using any, uh, any sharpness in there. Now my tracking is not good. If my tracking would be good, the stars would be perfectly round, not square. If they're square, back off on the sharpness and back off on the APC. The APC has got to be set at zero and one. Exactly. So what we want to do, you're absolutely right, Rusty. So uh, if you do that, but you want detail, I agree with you on that one. We still get good detail here, although the APC is all the way down. But let's bring it back up again. I'm going to put the APC back at 6, and I'm going to put the other one at 7. Okay, and you press Enter. Wow, look at the detail we got now in M57. Now I'm going to go to the sharpness and the capture device bring that up from two to seven wow i tell you the attention is towards the object itself because the faint small stars stay round that is a fabulous image of m57 live six second exposure you cannot get this with any other cameras on the market Regardless of the price, you're going to pay for it. That's the difference between a real video camera and a USB camera type. It's like, it's like night and day. Absolutely. Hey Jack, I, I see it on my 32-inch monitor here, the curve monitor, and I got to put the interline when you have bad tracking like I do. Only brighter and bigger stars will, and it's a normal occurrence. And the way to fix that is very simple. Back off on the APC and make sure your tracking is right. If you do that, you're going to get a normal looking image like anything else. Oh, okay. Uh, hopefully it's not getting too choppy. I hope Windows not decided to do a... Uh, I hope Windows have, hasn't uh, decided to do a up, update while I'm broadcasting. Okay, is the video back on again? That's the issue I have here with uh, my internet. Okay, sounds good. Good stuff, Brian, Jack, and, and Larry, thank you very much for letting me know. Sounds good. I'm not going to move my head unless I might have a busted wire in my microphone. Who knows? But as you can see, every refresh or every six seconds, the image is shifting. If it wouldn't be, the resolution of M57 would be double to what we're seeing. This is an amazing image. I'm going to stop 
this for a moment. And here's what we're going to do. So that's the part I like. Again, you don't have that on other cameras. You put the zoom on. And let's increase the zoom on this guy. That's what I like. Let's get some zooming action happening. And we're going to move that little guy towards the left. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to bring that up a little bit. It's getting cold in here. All right. That should be good, good enough. And now we're going to start oh, over again. No, but it feels good. Okay. So I've got about 1.5, 1.6 times electronic zoom from the camera. And as you can see, the tracking is screwed up. So what else is new? <laughs> I think I'm reaching the top here of uh, my mount, actually. This is what's happening. Well, that sucks. Let me see if we could bring that down here a little bit. I just saw a IC1296, I believe. Yep, right there. You see that fuzzy guy uh, at about 1 o'clock? That is uh, 1296. Now we've got quite a lot of image brightness. Let's bring this down a little bit more. There you go. That's not too, too, too bad. Very acceptable. And we see nebulosity coming out of the ring, just like Jack mentioned. Here's the other thing that we could do is go to Gamma 1 on the camera. And gee whiz, all your black rings are gone. All the ring around the stars are gone. Well, that's simple. That's, the explanation is very, very simple. That is because we've turned down the background dark enough to cover the same darkness from around the stars. So basically, you have now a perfectly matched background that you should use all the time by keeping the brightness down. If you bring the brightness up, you're going to see the rings around the stars on the brighter ones anyways. You don't want to do that. And to eliminate that, if you go to APC and turn APC off, or basically at zero, those rings are going to disappear. This is an artifact of the processing of, of uh, the sharpening algorithm of the vertical and horizontal pixel. So if you bring that down, there you go. It's gone completely. Now the tracking is really, really poor. So what we're gonna do is stop our six second, take off the zoom, go back at six second, and leave everything the way it was. And let's see what's gonna happen at six second with this setting. Wow, beautiful dark background, crisp M57. Uh, brightness here is at 98, contrast at 53. Now that's using Stefan software. And there's a giant mosquito about an inch and a half long that's buzzing around my head. And uh, I'm watching him at the moment. Make sure he doesn't come and land on my forehead and do his thing on the forehead. Okay. Let's bring back up again M57 because my tracking is so lousy. And this is Altaz, by the way. Once again, you don't need to go super long exposure. You gotta practice, stick to one or two object per night, and that way you get to master what you need to do with the exterminator. Now I have to repeat this again. I know I said it earlier and I'm gonna repeat it again. There's not one USB camera on the market that's going to give you this kind of resolution, this kind of color fidelity, this amount of detail, and such short exposure. And this is what video is supposed to be. It's supposed to be to capture an image with the shortest amount of exposure. And the reason is, it's to avoid exactly what's happening now. Crappy tracking. Not good. I'm not having good tracking. So we're going to select another target to go at. So I'm going to recoup here. Uh, brightness adjustments at 98. You could have it at about 100. That'll do as well. 
Uh, here's 100 now. Contrast extremely important. If you leave contrast at default, that's what you're going to get. Increase contrast too high, 63, which is the maximum. Too much noise, too much in this bright image brightness. I usually leave it between 55 and 57, which gives me pretty well what I need. Saturation, I usually keep it about 21, 22. In this case, I'm running it at 32, which is a default. Here we go. Here's uh, the default rate here. And the hue is set at 41 instead of 62 as uh, defaulted. It's just to get that right ba color balance. Now, we could go to manual mode, which I just did, on a camera, and we could go infrared. This is uh, the infrared image uh, of M57 and and the surrounding. There's two settings of that, and you could find that under the white balance. Go to manual, and then you've got 32K, 56K, and off. If you go to your 32K, you're near infrared. This is what it is. You want to try this when it's hazy outside, or if it's slightly cloudy, like 11% or so. It's one of those nights where you can't barely see any stars, and you know you've got thin clouds. Try the infrared and see what's going to happen. You're going to be able to see quite a lot of M57 and other targets that uh, you wish to uh, observe. Okay, um, we are back to M57. We're going to go look for another target. I'm hoping uh, this thing is going to go where it needs to go. So bear with me if it takes time. My tracking and star alignment is completely off and uh, I'm going to be right back.